Hi, my name is John Clegg, uh, currently playing the role of Muddles here at, uh, at the Richmond Theatre in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Uh, and the rest of the year I spend travelling the world as a stand-up comedian. So you've been in Panto for a long time. How many years is it now? Well, it's, this year is my 19th year in Panto, believe it or not. So next year will be 20 years. So uh, I did my first one in the year 2000. Uh, I missed one year in between, but uh, I've done that every year since then. And uh, it literally has taken me all over the country. And uh, this year in Richmond, my second year on, on the trot in Richmond. And uh, yeah, here's to many more. So how did you get into pantomime in the first place? Well, I was working, you know, travelling around do, doing stand-up comedy for quite a while and uh, I, did, I did a show called Forever in Blue Jeans, which was a theatre tour and I did a bit of comedy in that and sang a bit and um, they said to me, uh, they said, oh, you should give Pantomime a go. The musical director I was working with at the time, uh, he, he put me in touch with the Panto producer who auditioned me and, uh, yeah, I got the role. I didn't really know what to expect, but, uh, yeah, that was it, that was it. It's been all the way uphill since then. Can I ask a trade secret? Is it scripted or do you just go with it, ad lib a lot? Oh, um, I would say it's 95% of it is scripted, but you know we're allowed to change certain bits. Uh, usually during rehearsals we change a, th a few things around. I always throw a few impressions in and stuff like that. But, uh, but there's also a lot of stuff that happens during the run as well. There's, there's things that happen on stage. We make mistakes, it's funny, we keep it in. And, uh, but we'll generally make a, a, few, a few sort of mistakes during most shows just because of the nature of, uh, of pantomime really there's always so much going on and it's always frantic but it and it's live theatre and, uh, and and people seem to love it as well if something goes wrong they absolutely love it so this year you're working with joe brand last year you worked with robert Lindsay. you've worked with many celebrities over the years how are they to work with and is there anyone who found who's absolutely fantastic you'd like to work with again oh do you know that that's such a good question i mean i've worked with so many celebrities over the years and uh and I would say pretty much all of them have been great. They've been great to work with. Jo's fantastic, you know, she's, she's really good fun. She's, she's really lovely as well. She's a lovely, lovely person. Uh, Robert Lindsay last year was incredible. I mean, he was, he's, but he's, you know, he's a West End performer. He's got all the, all the Tony Awards and all that sort of stuff. He's done sitcoms. And uh, he really, really sort of made the, the role of Hook his own really put his own sort of take on it um and over the years i've worked with many people like nigel havers and worked with him uh i worked with craig revel horwood as well in panto who uh turns out is the loveliest person you will ever meet in your life nothing like his tv persona uh also i mean he's an amazing dancer obviously as we know but he's an incredible singer as well so uh you, you do get surprised by some of the some of the people you work with i mean my first pantomime dame that i worked with is, uh, was the vicar from dad's army uh, who's still with us, fortunately, Frank Frank Williams, who was absolutely fantastic, um, a great pro, and you could see it, you know, the way he used to work. Uh, but, you know, everyone has been great, and I think Panto is just one of those things where everyone just, just goes for it and has a good time, and you can see it on the stage. Over the last 19 years, you must have done en every single Panto possible, but is there one you haven't done? Is there a character you'd love to play? Well, do you know, I, the, I think possibly the only one I haven't done is Sleeping Beauty. I think that's the only one I haven't done. Um, I've done Aladdin eight times, believe it or not, and uh, I've done Cinderella a couple of times, and uh, this is my third year doing Snow White. Um, but, uh, but I love, I think Cinderella's probably my favorite. It's, it's the most magical panto and buttons that I always play when we do Cinderella. That's always a great role to play. It's great fun. You include your impressions during the show. How much training do you do? Is it difficult to get that person's voice? For instance, you've done Boris Johnson and uh, Donald Trump. But how long does it take you? And is, is there some voices you just cannot do? Or how do you go about it? Yeah, I mean, do, do you know, it's one of those things, impressions, that I hear a voice. If they've got an accent, a regional accent, that really helps a lot. Someone like Anton Deck. Quite often you can get it straight away. You hear a voice and you just go, bang, there it is. But others, you, you, you have to learn and sit there and, and study it a bit. And I tend to use YouTube a lot because you know you, you just get them, you can look them up straight away, bang, there they are. Listen to what they say, pick out certain words and just keep phrasing them and, and try and work on their mannerisms and how they will sort of like say certain things and catch phrases they might come out with. But it can be a bit of a labor of love sometimes, to be honest. I guess that's what makes you an impressionist and me not because I'm hopeless at copying people's accents but your nephew is brilliant I think he's going to follow in your footsteps I think you really should encourage him to be on stage I know I know I've, I've heard him taking off the teachers it's great <laughs> hey tidy up 
<laughs> Not the presenter. I, once, I said, I said uh, in the kindest of ways, I said, he takes the mickey out of your accent. She says, oh, I know. She says, That's how I started. I was doing the teachers at school as well, you know, sort of like um, pretending to be the teachers, taking off their voices. And then uh, that sort of went on to TV people, um, you know, people that are on the TV. I was coming into school doing, doing uh, impressions of the people that we'd seen on TV that weekend. And uh, yeah, I suppose I never looked back after that. Has anyone ever objected to your impressions, say that you're taking the mickey out of them or that you're just plain rubbish? Well, no, I mean, it's only ever happened once that somebody um, literally ob- did object to it. Uh, I thought it was going to happen when I did Britain's Got Talent, because obviously I, I took off Simon Cowell and Anton Deck and they were on the, on the sidelines watching. Uh, but they loved it. They absolutely loved it. But I was on a cruise ship last year and I did an impression of Donald Trump. That's right, an impression of Donald Trump. I came off the stage and I said, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's here, the Donald is here and all of that. And when I came off, these, um, this American couple came up to me and said they were very offended by me taking the mickey out of Donald Trump. And I said, what you've got to understand I said I mean it was mainly 95% British people on the cruise ship there just had to be a few Americans on there and uh uh, they don't like you taking the mickey out of the politicians that they support. And I said, well, unfortunately, I said, in the, in the UK, we take the mickey out of our politicians and that's the way it goes. So what can I do?